You're probably typing these long, overly detailed prompts into Gemini, thinking that more words equals better results. Maybe you're even copying those perfect prompt templates from Reddit, stuffing them with formatting rules and instructions. Well, I've spent months testing Google's new Gemini 3 model, and here's what surprised me. All that extra fluff you're adding? It's actually making your results worse. The model is so advanced now that it wants you to communicate like a human, not a robot. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to actually get the best results from Gemini 3 in 2026. We're talking about prompting strategies that work with the model's intelligence instead of against it, real examples across coding, content creation, research, and productivity, plus the hidden features most people don't even know exist. First up, let me show you the single biggest shift in how you should be writing prompts now. And trust me, it's going to feel almost too simple. The new prompting reality. Here's the thing about Gemini 3 that Google quietly released in November 2025. This model is wildly different from anything that came before. We're talking about over 650 million people using this every month, and most of them are still prompting like it's 2023. The old way of prompting was all about being hyper-specific. You'd write something like, please analyze the attached report and extract the following fields using JSON format with double quotes around keys for revenue, expenses, and margin, ensuring that numerical values are not quoted. That's exhausting just to read, right? But here's where it gets interesting. Gemini 3 has been trained to understand context and structure naturally. So now, that same prompt becomes Extract Q3 2025 Revenue, Expenses, and Net Profit Margin from the Report. Return as JSON. That's it. Two sentences. And Gemini will give you perfectly formatted JSON without you having to explain what JSON even looks like. The model can handle up to a million tokens of context. To put that in perspective, you could paste an entire novel, a research paper, multiple spreadsheets, images, even two hours of video content, and Gemini will synthesize all of it. It's not just reading words anymore. It's understanding images, interpreting charts, analyzing code, and connecting dots across different types of media simultaneously. And the accuracy? On reasoning and coding benchmarks, it's hitting state-of-the-art scores. For factual Q&A, it's sitting around 72% accuracy, which means about 7 out of 10 times, it's nailing the answer. That's massive progress, but we'll talk about that other 28% later, because it matters. The Clarity First Framework Let me show you the framework that's actually working in 2026. Forget everything you learned about prompt engineering from a year ago. The new approach is what Google calls Clarity First Instructions, and it's honestly a game changer. Think of your prompts in three simple parts, task, input, and output. That's the mental model. You're telling Gemini what you want it to do, giving it the materials to work with, and specifying how you want the result delivered. Here's a real example. Let's say you have a document about project risks. The old way. I am providing you with a document. Please carefully read through it. I need you to identify any risks that are mentioned. For each risk, I also need you to find if there's a mitigation strategy discussed. Please format this as a table with proper columns and rows. The columns should be labeled risk and mitigation. Use markdown formatting for the table. The new way. Task. List the top five risks mentioned in the document. Output. Markdown table with columns, risk, and mitigation. See the difference? You're treating Gemini like an intelligent collaborator, not like it needs step-by-step -step instructions for breathing. The model will automatically create a properly formatted markdown table. It knows what that means. It's inferred thousands of table structures during training. Now, if you want to give Gemini additional context or perspective, you absolutely can. You might start with something like, you are a financial project manager, or as a cybersecurity expert. This gives the model a lens to view the problem through. But here's the key. You're setting context, not writing a novel. One sentence about the role or perspective, then move directly into what you need. The same goes for constraints. 
If you need British spelling, say, use British English. If you want a casual tone, say, use casual tone. If there's a word limit, state it, max 150 words. Gemini respects these constraints without you having to repeat them or create complex rules around them. Multimodal magic. But wait until you see what happens when you start combining text with images, videos, and documents. This is where Gemini 3 really pulls ahead of everything else. Let's say you have a complex chart from a quarterly report. You upload the image, and instead of describing what's in the chart, you just write, What does the red segment represent in this chart? Explain in two sentences. Gemini looks at the image, identifies visual elements, interprets the data, and gives you a precise answer. It's genuinely analyzing the visual information, not just looking at metadata or alt text. The same principle applies to video. If you're on the pro tier, you can upload up to two hours of video content. Imagine you have a recorded meeting or a lecture. You can reference specific timestamps. Summarize the discussion between 1530 and 22 in this video. Gemini will process that section, extract the key points, and deliver a summary. It's like having someone watch the video for you and report back on exactly what you need to know. For PDFs and long documents, the million token context window means you're not limited to summaries or excerpts anymore. You can feed Gemini an entire research paper, a contract, a technical manual, whatever you need analyzed, and ask specific questions about any part of it. What methodology did they use in Section 3? Or list all the legal obligations in this contract as a numbered list. It handles the full document without breaking a sweat. There's even this new feature called Gemini Canvas, where you can ask it to create visuals. You might say, generate an infographic showing the water cycle, or create a poster design for a community event. The model will produce actual visual assets that you can use and iterate on. Real-world use cases. Let me walk you through how this actually plays out across different domains, because this is where theory meets practice. Coding and development. If you're a developer or you work with code at all, Gemini 3 is probably going to become your favorite tool. The model topped the Web Dev Arena benchmark with a score of 1487 ELO, which in the coding world is basically saying it's better than most human programmers at certain tasks. Here's the practical reality. You can describe what you need in plain English, and Gemini will write the code. Something like, write a Python function called calculate discount that takes a price and discount percentage, returns the final price, and includes a doc string with type hints. Within seconds, you get a fully formed function with proper documentation, type annotations, everything formatted correctly. But it goes deeper than just writing snippets. You can ask Gemini to refactor existing code, explain complex algorithms, debug errors, even generate entire web interfaces. There's a demo where someone simply asked for a landing page for a retro dance night, and Gemini produced complete HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for a functioning web page. Not a template, not a framework. Actual custom code based on that description. The agentic coding features take this even further. Gemini can now execute code in a real development environment, run tests, use version control. Google's anti-gravity platform demonstrated this by having Gemini solve complex problems, like balancing a simulated cart pole by writing and running code iteratively until it worked. Content creation and creative work. For writers, marketers, anyone creating content, Gemini handles everything from blog posts to social media copy to video scripts. The key is being specific about tone and format without over-explaining. You might prompt, write a 200-word blog post about sustainable travel tips. Use a friendly, conversational tone. That's all you need. Gemini will draft something engaging that matches the style you requested. If you're not satisfied, you can iterate. Make it more professional or add a section about carbon offsets. One of my favorite examples is when someone asked Gemini to explain nuclear fusion, and the model responded with both working code to visualize the process and a poem about fusion. That's the kind of creative range we're talking about. 
It's not just generating text. It's thinking across mediums and finding interesting ways to communicate ideas. For visual content, you can request infographics, diagrams, illustrations. Create an infographic showing the benefits of remote work will get you an actual visual asset. It's not perfect every time, and you'll need to refine, but having a first draft appear in seconds changes the entire creative workflow. Research and learning. This is where that massive context window becomes crucial. You can upload entire textbooks, research papers, lecture transcripts, whatever learning materials you're working with, and Gemini will process all of it. A practical scenario, you're studying for an exam and you have 200 pages of lecture notes. You upload them and ask, create a study guide covering the five main topics with key concepts and definitions under each. Gemini reads through everything, identifies the main themes, extracts the important details, and organizes it into a study guide format. Or let's say you're doing research and you come across a dense academic paper. Instead of spending an hour reading it, you can ask, summarize the methodology and key findings in three bullet points. What are the limitations mentioned by the authors? You get the essentials in seconds, and if you need to dive deeper into specific sections, you can ask follow-up questions. In Google Search's AI mode, there's even functionality where Gemini can create interactive simulations on the fly. Someone asked how RNA polymerase works, and instead of just describing it, Gemini coded a mini simulation showing the process visually. That's learning taken to a different level. Productivity and professional tasks. In day-to-day -day work, Gemini becomes like having a highly capable assistant who never gets tired. Email drafting, meeting summaries, task prioritization, data analysis, it handles all of it. For emails, you can be super brief. Compose an email inviting the team to a planning meeting next Tuesday at 2 p.m. Keep it friendly, but professional. Gemini drafts it, you review, maybe tweak a line or two, and send. What used to take 10 minutes now takes one. Travel planning is surprisingly robust. If you say, plan a three-day trip to Rome with a $1,000 budget including flights, accommodation, and activities, Gemini will come back with a complete itinerary, cost breakdowns, attraction recommendations, even timing for each day. There's a visual itinerary mode that looks like a travel magazine spread with maps and images. The Gemini agent features, which are still rolling out, can actually connect to your Gmail and calendar. You can tell it, summarize all the emails from the last week about the marketing campaign and highlight any action items, and it will triage your inbox, pull out the relevant threads, and give you a synthesized report. It can even schedule meetings by looking at everyone's availability, though it always asks for confirmation before taking any action. For data analysis, if you have a spreadsheet of sales data, you can paste it and ask, what are the trends in quarterly revenue? Are there any products underperforming? Gemini will analyze the numbers, identify patterns, and present insights in plain language. You're not doing formulas or pivot tables. You're just asking questions and getting answers. Expert strategies. Now let me share some strategies that the AI community has figured out through extensive testing because there are definitely ways to make Gemini work even better. First, context-first prompting. This is where you set the stage before asking the question. As an expert data scientist, given this attached sales report from Q4 2024, you're priming Gemini to approach the task from a specific perspective. It's not mandatory, but for complex or specialized tasks, it significantly improves the quality of responses. Multi-step instructions work really well. Instead of cramming everything into one long sentence, break it into numbered steps. Task, analyze this code. Step one, explain what it does. Step two, identify any bugs or inefficiencies. Step three, suggest improvements. Gemini loves structure like this. It processes each step sequentially and gives you organized output. For complex reasoning tasks, explicitly asking Gemini to show its work can improve accuracy. Phrases like, explain your reasoning step by step, or walk me through how you arrived at that answer, 
trigger the model to be more deliberate. The chain of thought approach, as it's called, helps prevent shallow or incorrect answers. There's also this interesting technique some people use called simulating a debate. Before making a recommendation, you can prompt, discuss the pros and cons of option A versus option B before giving your final recommendation. This forces Gemini to consider multiple perspectives, which usually leads to more balanced and thoughtful responses. One thing that's really powerful, Gemini maintains conversation context across multiple turns. So if you give it a detailed document or set of instructions once, you can ask follow-up questions without repeating everything. Based on the report I shared earlier, what about the section on customer retention, Gemini remembers. You're building a conversation, not starting from scratch each time. And here's a tip that seems obvious but makes a huge difference. Iterate on the answers you get. If the first response isn't quite right, don't give up. Ask Gemini to refine it. Make this more concise. Change the tone to be more formal. Add specific examples. The second or third pass is often significantly better than the first. Warnings and limitations. Before we wrap up, I need to talk about the limitations because Gemini is powerful, but it's not magic, and you need to know where the edges are. Hallucinations are still a thing. Even though Gemini 3 scores around 72% on factual accuracy benchmarks, that means roughly one in four answers could contain errors or made-up information. If you're asking about obscure facts, niche topics, or anything that could have multiple interpretations, always verify the response with trusted sources. Don't treat Gemini's output as gospel, especially for critical decisions. There are biases baked into the model, just like with any AI trained on internet data. Google has done extensive safety testing, but the model can still exhibit biases or misunderstand sensitive queries. Be thoughtful about how you phrase questions around controversial topics and be aware that the responses might reflect certain perspectives more than others. Privacy is a real consideration. Anything you upload to Gemini, whether it's text, images, documents, could potentially be stored or used in model training, unless you're using specific enterprise settings that guarantee data isolation. Don't upload confidential business documents, personal information, or anything you wouldn't want on a server somewhere. Read the terms of service for whatever tier you're using. If you're using the agent features or any functionality that connects to your Google Workspace, be careful. These tools can perform actions like organizing emails, scheduling meetings, or creating documents. They always ask for confirmation before doing anything significant, but still, supervise them. Don't just blindly approve actions without understanding what's happening. The free version of Gemini has usage limits. You might hit monthly caps on the number of queries or the length of conversations. The paid pro and ultra tiers give you more capacity and speed, plus access to features like deep think mode and extended video processing. If you're planning to use Gemini heavily, you'll probably need a subscription. And finally, remember we're early in the Gemini 3 era. Features are rolling out gradually. Some capabilities mentioned here might be in beta or limited to certain regions or account types. Google is updating the platform constantly, so what's true today might change in a month. Keep an eye on official announcements. So that's Gemini 3 in 2026. The biggest shift is moving away from over-engineered prompts and toward clear, conversational instructions. Think of it as talking to a highly capable colleague who understands context and can work across text, images, code, and video simultaneously. Use the strategies we covered. Keep prompts simple. Structure them with task and output. Leverage the multimodal capabilities and iterate on responses until they're exactly what you need. Whether you're coding, creating content, doing research, or managing daily tasks, Gemini can genuinely save you hours of work if you know how to guide it properly. What are you most excited to try with Gemini? Drop a comment and let me know. If this guide helped clarify how to actually use this tool effectively, hit the like button and subscribe for more AI breakdowns. I'm constantly testing these models and sharing what actually works versus what's just hype. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.